Hello, and welcome to this film about esters. It's the fifth, fifth in a series of films about functional groups. This is getting to be like some kind of Star Wars, um, well, not trilogy, but um, somewhere meaning seven films. So uh, anyway, hopefully by the end of this film, um, you'll know what an ester functional group looks like. You'll be able to name esters, and you'll know why fats can be thought of as being tri-esters or molecules with three esters in, you'll be able to explain uh, why esters have the physical properties that they do, and you'll be able to name some reactions that they take part in. So let's have a look first of all at the ester functional group and see what it looks like. Here is one in this molecule, and you might be thinking, well, that looks a bit like a carboxylic acid that lost its, lost its hydrogen atom. Okay, and here in this general formula where we're representing unspecified groups as R, we've got R, C double bond O, single bond O, and then another R group. Okay, so that's what an ester is. As I said, it looks like an acid that's lost its H. Okay, and if I'm to write the formula of an ester, then I represent the ester group as COO. So I carry on the chain there. So if ever I'm seeing COOC instead of COOH, which would have been carboxylic acid, I know I've got an ester group. So if I see that in a formula, I know I'm dealing with an ester. Okay, how do I name these things? Now this is going to make a bit more sense when uh, you know how they're made, because you'll see that, as I've mentioned before, making them is a matter of combining alcohols with carboxylic acids. So if you bear that in mind and say, which part of this molecule looks like an alcohol and which part of it looks like an like a carboxylic acid then we'll have a bit more of a clue about how to name it because the first part of an ester's name which always, always ends in aisle takes its name from the part that looks like the alcohol so because I've got two carbons here it's going to be eth and then aisle, ethyl and then because I've got two carbons here, the second bit always ends in O8. So this is going to be ethan, so I've got two carbons, O8, so ethyl ethanoate. Okay, if we look at this example here, here's the bit that looks like an alcohol. At least it looks like an alcohol that's lost its H. Here's the bit that looks like the carboxylic acid, which again appears to have lost its H. What am I going to call this? Well, the alcohol part gives me the start of the name, so this would be methyl. And then one, two, three carbons here, so propanoate. And when you're writing these things, obviously, you don't have to use different colours for the two parts of the name. But what you do have to watch out for is the possibility that they've drawn the ester group the other way round. Now, I've always had my carboxylic acid on the left and the alcohol on the right here. But here it's different, okay? If we look here, this is the bit that looks like an alcohol without an H, and this is the bit that looks like the carboxylic acid that lost an H. So how am I going to name this one? Well, this would be ethyl again, because the bit that looks like an alcohol has two carbons, but the bit that looks like a carboxylic acid only has one, so I'm going to call this ethyl methanoate. And you can do this for anything up to eight carbons in either of the chains, but no branches again. So, let's have a look at what we mean by a fat. Now, this thing might look like, a, I don't know, like a bit of a computer code or something like that. But what we can hopefully see in here is that there's an ester functional group there, there's an ester functional group here, and an ester functional group there. And in fact, if you look at it again, you might be able to see that you've got something which looks very much like a fatty acid here. So a big, long, non-polar bit with something on the end that looks a bit like a carboxylic acid that's lost its H. Okay, And in actual fact, most naturally occurring fats are things called triesters, because they've got one, two, three ester functional groups. And basically, we've got these fatty acids which are joined to this molecule here, which if I highlight in blue, this might be making a bit of a mess. In fact, I'll just get rid of all the colors there. and We'll just highlight the molecule that kind of looks like an alcohol here. This, If I put H's back on all the oxygens, 
I'd call that alcohol glycerol. It's got three alcohol groups. Okay. So a fat can be called a triester because it's got three, one, two, three ester functional groups in it. And that becomes really important later when we look at soap manufacture because we make soaps from fats. Okay, looking at the physical properties of esters, we need to just remember that oxygen has lone pairs and um, it's a highly electronegative element, so it's going to be making itself slightly negative at the expense of the carbons, which will be slightly positive. Esters don't have hydrogens attached directly to the oxygen, so they can't hydrogen bond with themselves, but they can form dipole-dipole forces with each other, with themselves. Um, if I talk about their water solubility, I've got to consider about I've got to consider their ability to form hydrogen bonds with water, which they can do, but only via their oxygens, not through hydrogens. So once again, I suppose you could say that these um, might be expected to add, act quite a lot like ketones or aldehydes in that they've got dipole-dipole forces, but not hydrogen bonding with themselves and dipole-dipole forces and some hydrogen bonding with water. So we'd expect their boiling points to be higher than non-polar molecules and we'd expect them to be more soluble than non-polar molecules but not as high as molecules that can hydrogen bond and not as soluble as mo molecules that can hydrogen bond. Looking at reactions that esters take part in, well the most important one that you look at in the waste course, in fact it's really the only one that esters take part in, is called hydrolysis. This is when we break esters down back into their component parts. So you're making alcohols from them, because remember alcohols and carboxylic acids go together to make esters. And usually you'll actually make the salt of a carboxylic acid, but we'll see why that is rather than a carboxylic acid later when we look at this reaction in more depth. And as for making esters, well this is what I've been saying a few times, this involves a condensation or an esterification reaction that takes place between an alcohol and a carboxylic acid and makes that ester functional group that we've seen here. Right, well that's about it. So hopefully now you know what an ester looks like and how to name one. You'll know why a fat or why, uh, why yes, why a fat can be called a triester and something about the physical properties of esters and what reactions they take part in. Um, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, please feel free to come and ask if there's anything there that confused you or post a comment on YouTube so that other people can have the benefit of your wisdom.